Happy birthday once again, Brother Brian. Amen. Hallelujah. God is faithful. That table. Amen. We were reminded this morning that it's not a table of tolerance that looks the other way and goes about his own business as in Luke is Mark 9, 38, when John said, Teacher, we saw a man driving out demons in your name and we told him to stop. We told him to stop because it doesn't belong to our group. Tolerance, word them. In another account in Mark 5, says when Jesus and his disciples came into a country called the Gatherings, there was a man with an unclean spirit. The Bible says there were many who were cast into the swine. But the most interesting part of that account was, hallelujah, even though this man was tormented, what happened was they heard, the city heard that they lost 2,000 of their swine. <laughs> and they came to Jesus. They saw the man which was bound, now fully clothed, and yet passed and begged Jesus, leave and not come back. <laughs> they were tolerant of the possessed man as long as it didn't interfere with his business. As long as it didn't interfere with their business, okay, you can go. You can cut yourself and you go, man, you want to, I know this, I'll give you some. It's a game business. The people were unmoved and unconcerned and unsympathetic about the man's deliverance. Neither this morning as we presented, the table is not a table of caring. Caring is blind. Caring that cares for everybody, no matter who they are, but doesn't allow them, the person you are caring for, to step outside of the path of his caring. Look at it, nurse. Oh, you must take your tablets at this hour and that hour. It's the same thing. Caring can suffocate, Katie can smother, Katie can stifle your growth and healing. But beloved, this morning, we were so beautifully reminded this morning by even our praise of our sister Muriel, this is a table of love. It is a table of love. Hallelujah. And happy love. Sacrificial love. The love of the Father. Hallelujah. As we heard, Where you're willing to put aside your hopes and your challenges and your dreams so that someone else can be fulfilled. Talking about that love. Hallelujah. Sacrificial love. Hallelujah. It recognizes that the person has a will. They need to travel along a path and get there on their own. Yet it has the compassion to be there when they are lost. When they are in trouble. Hallelujah. We are there. Over and over we reminded, amen, and so too as the sister Val always echo, God commended his love towards us. And that while we have served as Christ, amen, hallelujah, Christ died for us. Amen. I heard it at 2.30 this morning, sister Val, because of his love, his sacrificial love, Christ came and changed our state forever. He changed his love, changed our state forever. Love is not dropping a tuna in a cup and driving on. Hello? Hello? Love is not dropping a tuna and driving on and I did my deed. Love will change your state. This is what love will do. We were alienated, excluded, but now we are a new creation. And you've been called of God and set apart. This morning they reminded us about life. And as we heard, an eternity of life. And fellowship in life. Amen. The Bible reminds us, 2 Peter 1 and 3 says, According as His divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Through the knowledge of Him that has called us unto glory and virtue, where we are given exceeding and great and precious promises, that by these, that by these, that we are partakers of His divine nature. He has given us His nature, and we have taken it in this morning through communion. Hallelujah! Amen. We have taken that bread and we drank of the cup of the new covenant. Amen. The divine nature. Hallelujah. 
working in you and through you. Yes. Amen. For the expression, hallelujah, of the riches and the fullness of Christ. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Simon, Simon Peter reminds us that every that goes into life of the stewardship of God, a life that is pleasing unto the Lord, has miraculously given unto you. Not by works that any man should boast. It's free. It's free. Gratis for nothing. You don't have to wait for Black Friday. Hallelujah. 50% and 85%. Amen. It's available to you now. It's available now. All the fullness of the God. Available now. Amen. God is not interested in what you can do for Him. God is not interested in what you can do for Him. He's interested in what we are in Him. What? What's in you? Christ in you, the hope of glory. The table this morning is furnished with nothing else but a bit of bread and a flagon of wine, as Pastor used to say. In many homes in the world, it would be considered poorly furnished table, where abundance is a sign of wealth, where it's a sign of prosperity, and variety is the spice of life. But in the kingdom of God, a bit of bread and a flagon of wine, it is his body and his precious blood. Hallelujah, shed for the remission of sin. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's accessible to all of us. He is accessible to all of us. Amen. When the Israelites were called out of Egypt into a land filled with milk and honey, they could get nothing, hallelujah, of Egypt into the promised land. But they murmured as we heard this morning. They murmured at Moses. They said unto Moses, It was better for us to serve the Egyptians. There were no mass graves in Egypt. Plus there was fish, cucumbers, melons, leeks and garlic. Onions. <laughs> Ooh, they were busy and brave onions. They said, Now you know, must eat this. Savor the smell, the aroma of Egypt. There were no mass graves there. But now we are sun dry. Hallelujah. We are dry as a roof. We need that. And garlic and onions. But now our soul, is, our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all besides the manner before our eyes. See, beloved, the Israelites were not allowed to bring anything of Egypt into the promised land. No leeks, no garlic, no cucumbers, nothing from Egypt. They were to be sustained of the good of the land which God has promised. And to bring anything in from Egypt into the promised land was blasphemy. Hallelujah. We should sing the song. Kana. Hallelujah. Kana. Hallelujah, what's that? Kana tu, Kana. Hallelujah, Kana. Hallelujah, what's that? Kana tu, da kali so da er. We should sing the song. We should sing the song. So to bring anything from Egypt into the promised land was blasphemy. Leave it there. Leave it off. So too we beloved, we are the church, and to bring anything from the world into the church is a grave error, and God warns us about this. Christ is the head, and the body which is the church is fed by the riches and the fullness, hallelujah, which is in Christ. He is the wisdom of God and the power of God, and, Christ, and the church is the expression of who Christ is. So who is our source? Where do we draw from? Who's feeding us this morning? Hallelujah, it's Christ. So we express. In the book of uh, Father Brown, but one was one. They taste so good because they eat so good. I got the 
tastes so good because they eat so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You look at the children of God. Amen. There's a smile. Hallelujah. Why? Because we are eating good food. Amen. Hallelujah. Why are you smiling when the church is low? Why are you smiling when you're so down, Pastor? Why are you smiling because man are eating from the tree of life? Hallelujah. What in new shoes does that? <laughs> Hallelujah! Amen. 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 My daughter said I had those thick props, you know, those guys that used to look with high heels here. Amen. <laughs> in the beginning, in the part, all that man had to do was to eat of the tree of life. It was his life, it was for his life, and for his enjoyment. Amen. When meal is dished up, I don't know why she's talking about the video. When meal is dished up, imagine brother Abel is like, yeah. <laughs> is that... no, because it's given with love. You must enjoy the meal. You must enjoy your salvation. Yes. Amen. Yes. Because the things are already been taken care of. Because you inhib your mood, inhib your love, inhib your Sort the system you know. It's sorted. Beloved, the promised land is not a place where we are going to. The promised land is not a place where we are going to. The promised land is what we are becoming. Beloved, our new Jerusalem or that great city is not a place where we are going to go. A place we will become. When we leave the face of the earth, we are not graduating, nor are we called home, nor is it a sunset service. Hallelujah. You will leave them. Amen. For the next time. Hallelujah. Amen. I must be the next time. But let us leave this morning. Amen. Turn with me to Isaiah 1 and verse 18. And through the praise this morning, the ministry of His Word, man, it's just confirmed that the Lord would like to share it. Like me to share this morning. Isaiah 1, Nathan, come now! Come now! And let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, brother Lord, although your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Last part of the Lord and the blessing to the reading of this precious word this morning. Hallelujah. God is faithful. I'm reminded this morning all I can do either is to plant or to water. That's all I can do this morning. Yes. Hallelujah. But it's God that gives an increase. Yes. All I can do is plant or I can water, but it's God that gives an increase. And this morning I can plant that which needs to be watered, and I can water that which was planted. But it's God that gives an increase. It's only God that can give God. What a beautiful expression of God's love and mercy towards us. In this verse, Jehovah speaks calling the sinner, the wretched man, the undependable, the weak, the sinful, and the rebel to come and settle this matter. The reality is that you're stained with sin. But God said, I will wash you clean as snow. I will wash you as clean as snow. Although your sin was stains of deep red, as deep as in Adam, and stretching far as judgment. Shock. That's a long time. In Adam, we all die. But in Christ, we shall live. In time. Although your stains are deep red, as deep as in Adam, and stretching as far as judgment. And you are on a downward trajectory. 
However, God says, come and let us reason together. You will be as white as wool. Hallelujah. You will be as white as wool. But I don't only take care of yourself. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat good of the land. Hallelujah. Kenneth Aiden asked God the challenges that he had. God sent him. But his heart was in place. I think this is coming. And he went to God with Isaiah 1 and verse 18. He said, Lord, I was obedient to your call. And God says, Yes, I will be If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat of the good of the land. Now, will you come to God and reason with Him? I thought to myself this morning, when you come, what will you say? Or what have you said? Do you remember your words when standing at the altar and said, Lord, here I am, so many, many years ago? Will you make excuses? The wise? The buts, as Adam said, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Adam said, it wasn't me. And the woman who came to me. Hey? Or as Peter said, Lord, thou knowest all things. I can hide nothing. You know my down sitting and you know my uprising. You know when I sit and when I stand up. You know my going out and my coming in. And you will stand, understand and attend to my thoughts afar. Can I hide anything from you? Come. Come now. And I'd like to entitle this message this morning. I know I have a few moments. I always give my title. <laughs> but I'd like to give it a title. It says the wheel in the wheel. I shared two weeks ago about a theme of 2021 which is so well and finished strong and I said that I was prompted to continue with the mindset as we build ourselves, hallelujah, up in the most holy faith. And as I'm preparing a few questions arose, how do we serve well? The Lord showed me a picture of a white and a man bearing a picture which I shared a few weeks ago. These are the questions and how do we serve well? I'm not going to go into much detail. Whom do you serve? How are you serving? What is being served? And as I gave some details and expounded on that. And lastly, who is doing the serving? That is God's eternal plan for your stewardship. I would like to take a few minutes or moments this morning as we look at the vessel doing the serving and God's eternal plan for your stewardship. Isaiah 64 and 6 says, All the righteous, all our righteousness, our doing good were as filthy rags before the Lord. We were sin contaminated and all our best efforts, all our doing good were as grease stained rags before the Lord. But you might say this morning, I didn't kill. I loved my neighbor. I didn't steal. I didn't do this so I didn't do that. Who is your yardstick this morning? As long as you are doing what is acceptable to humanity, all our doing good was grease stained rags. And the best cleaning detergents, including aerial or vanish, was impossible to remove. No matter what even type of washing machine you had, a top loader, a front loader, doesn't matter what automatic, even if I had a special drum with a diamond drum, it was impossible to remove that stain. Hallelujah. Isaiah says that there is scarlet as the stain was deep as red crimson and no amount of self-washing, self-cleansing, self-efforts will be able to remove it. Nothing. Nothing. Beloved, it took a great plan. A great plan. A great move of God. A great will to remove it. It took an exceeding and great and precious promises. It took the Son of the Most High God, Elohim. It took God Himself to come down from heaven, Emmanuel. 
Hallelujah. It took his only begotten son, born of a virgin, to be spied, despised, and rejected, to be oppressed and afflicted. Hallelujah. He was wounded by our transgressions. He was bruised by our iniquity. Our chastisement was upon him. He took everything on our behalf. And finally, to be crucified on the cruel cross of Calvary, just to remove that stain. Thank you for the complete work. It is finished. Thank you. It is finished. For unto us a child is born, unto us the son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is in Isaiah 9. We see throughout the ages that Christ is the center of the move of God. God himself said, though your sins be as scarlet, though they shall be as white as snow, they, though they may be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. This morning's table is a reminder of this great plan, the move of God. Hallelujah. Having God himself dispensed into you and me. What a beautiful picture. Living in you and me. That is for the stewardship of God. And that we may be partakers of His divine nature that is built up in Him. This is the love of the Father. And this love is demonstrated by the fulfillment of His plan, His rule, His economy in you and me. His plan. Who is doing the service? Beloved, it is God Himself. Hallelujah. God himself is working in you and through you. Hallelujah. This is what we must understand. Not by our efforts. Not by our efforts at all. When Pastor asked me to do Bible study, I was very, very fearful. Because now the pastors are just there. And now you, you know, you're writing in the sixth hour and you check out your, you know. But the second week, I understood while I was busy doing I'm nothing but a voice. Just say what the voice is. Not my own efforts, not my own strength. Nothing but the voice of God moving through you and me. And this morning is not an accident, it's not by chance, it's not by some move of the cosmos. Cosmos is God's divine and eternal plan to have you in God's house this morning. I'm telling you. Did you say in the world by speaking bunches? No, no, no. It's not for speaking bunches. In Ezekiel 1 in the 30th year, the fourth month, the third day of the month, which means in the fullness of time, when the right time finally came, and rather than in God's plan, the proper time had fully come, means God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law. Amen. In the fullness of time. That's why we get such a specific opening verse in Ezekiel. And the Revelation is exactly the same. You can't, you have to do Ezekiel and the Revelation together as possible. This plan was a mystery. Even creation was a mystery. Hallelujah. Solomon says in Ecclesiastes 3.14, I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it, that men should fear hallelujah before him. In essence, in Ezekiel saw, he saw visions of God. I saw a wheel within a wheel. And the wheel represents God's plan and his moving the earth. The idol wheel was so high, he says, it was terrible, it was fearful. It means the difference is massive. We study the scripture, there is lies, there is lies, and God, Christ is the center and the circumference of the earth. He's the center of God's plan, hallelujah, and he's the circumference of God's plan. And Ecclesiastes reminds whatever happens or can happen has already happened before God. 
and makes the same thing happen again and again and again. So what, did, what Solomon comes to realize, we quit asking questions. Just fear God. Just fear Him. That's all. Just fear Him. We see Christ as the center or the hub of the wheel, or the circumference of the wheel for accomplish God's eternal plan. And my burden this morning is not to talk to you about God's plan, but to show you you're in His plan. I can, I always use this analogy, chocolate cake. I can tell you, you know, you can say the chocolate cake is flour, it's cocoa powder. You can explain the best, the, the chemistry behind making the perfect chocolate cake. But if I don't taste that chocolate cake, it is not a reality. You can talk about God's plan, God's move and everything, you can explain it and expound on it. But if you don't realize that you're in His plan. Listen, tired of reality. You're in His plan, you're in His move. Hallelujah. Even in His heart. You've been placed here for a specific reason to fulfill the plan of God in your life. Amen. Amen. Romans 8 9 says, 8 19 says, for the creation waits in, in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. But this manifestation is the waiting, creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. But beloved, when I read this, account. It came to mind we are not like a traffic officer sitting by the traffic lights and watching people just doing what they and there's no lights. And he's watching. No. We are the movies. Hiding people, moving people. There's a crossroads. Some people are the crossroads of their life. And God has sent you just to direct them. Come, move, move along. Move, not now, not now, there's an accident. Not now, come, move, move along, move along. All right, your turn, right, just come, come, come. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. God wants you to realize that your inner span is doing it again and again and again. I'm telling you this morning, He's gone before you. Amen. Follow Him. Trust in Him. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Creation is waiting for the manifestation. Hallelujah. For the riches of God to be expressed in and through the children of God. In other versions, in other versions it says creation is somehow more or less being held back in waiting for you to realize who you are in Christ. His family members waiting crying, yelling, waiting. And Christ in you is the answer. Christ is you. Christ in you is the answer. And Isaiah verse 19 says, if you be willing and obedient, if you be willing, that is to breathe after, that is to become, becomes your inhaling and your exhaling, you're going out and you're coming in, if you're willing to hear with attention, that is to hear his voice with attention as we heard this morning my brother Gavin, he shall eat of the good of the land. Hear this. How do you hear the voice of God? In God, John's Gospel it says, My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them out of I have. Amen. So where is God speaking? Beloved in Isaiah 1, 18 and 19, there's none other than Jehovah himself speaking. Revelation 2 says that he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit, the Spirit says unto the churches. To him that overcometh, and what is that? Overcometh the world, because the world is trying to bring, come into the church. He that overcometh the world, will, uh, will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God, in the presence of Almighty God. 
And we see this taken example in Psalm 1. We see man speaking. It has six verses, which is the number of man. Psalm 1 uses the word, blessed is the man. And he shall be, and he shall prosper, and they shall succeed in everything they do. Pointing to man's efforts. In Psalm 2, we hear God speaking. The very different picture, there's 12 verses, which signifies God's governance, His authority, His appointment, and completeness. Serve the Lord with fear, kiss the Messiah, blessed are they who take refuge in Him. All efforts are directed to where? To the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, who is our source, who is our deliverer, our present help in trouble, our all in all. Incline your ear, beloved. When you're going through the scriptures, then hear who is speaking. Beloved, if you be willing and obedient this morning, in closing, you shall eat of the good of the land. Everything you need, everything you need is in the good of the land. Your feeding is in the good of the land. Your building is in the good of the land. Everything you need as a supply is in the good of the land. But there's a deeper and a spiritual meaning for us, beloved. This morning, I present to you Christ as the good of the land. Everything the church needs, everything you and I need, hallelujah, is realized, is in Him. I realize something, beloved. We can be redeemed, delivered, washed as white as snow, but only if we are not willing and obedient we will not be able to express or experience the riches which is in heaven. You see so evident in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, which shows us the riches of the kingdom. You are able to speak with tongues of men and angels, the gifts of prophecy, of understanding all mysteries, and having all knowledge, and having all faith, and even feeding the poor. But if you don't have love, If you don't have love, it means nothing. Nothing. That love is the Father dwelling in you and me. Love, as we know, is a fruit of the Spirit. Beloved, I present to you who to win this son in your life. God bless you. Yes.